Hello, my name is Johan Wie, and I am the aviation psychologist for Isavia ANS, Iceland's air navigation service provider. Today I'm going to talk to you about our, the creation and validation of a stress tolerance exercise we use for selecting student air traffic controllers. In early 2017, following interviews with on-the-job trainers, we identified inability to handle stress as one of the leading causes of student attrition. Now, before this, we had largely used structured interviews and behavioral examples as a main way to determine a candidate's stress tolerance level. <clears throat> In these interviews, candidates nearly universally said that they would be highly capable of performing in high-stress situations and provided behavioral examples to support that. Anecdotally, however, giving a good answer to that question in no way guaranteed that the individual had the ability to handle a stressful situation. The literature confirms that these applicants were probably faking good. In a 2012 piece by Converse and Griffith, they estimated that between 20 and 40 percent of applicants will give overly positive answers about their capabilities and that faking good is far more common in high stakes selections. The selection to become an air traffic controller counts as high stakes as it can include a considerable monetary incentive and <clears throat> that might motivate candidates to give unrealistic answers to questions that might otherwise disqualify them. Our reasoning was that in order to see stress tolerance, we needed to put individuals in a situation where they had to perform a task in a stressful situation. Any sort of self-report, in our opinion, would inevitably be biased. And this led to the conversation of what is a stressful situation? How do we create a stressful situation? And the quintessential psychologist question, how can we measure stress tolerance? Now, multiple job analysis have been done on the role of air traffic controllers, and they repeatedly identify some sort of working under pressure handling stress element as crucial for the role. In an upcoming article reviewing ATCO job analysis by myself and Jenny Eaglestone, 21 out of 34 ATCO worker analysis specifically state the importance of this attribute. What they don't agree on is how to define it, how to define it and how to, what to name it. The clearest example possibly comes from the 1995 Sasha report, though, commissioned for the F by the FAA. It identifies stress tolerance as being capable of reacting in a problem-solving manner rather than, rather than an emotional one when confronted with adversity and remaining calm, composed and even-tempered in stressful situations. So, we felt that the best way to assess this stress tolerance was to create a new assessment centre exercise. Our assessment centre is highly modular, so it allows us to create specific exercises for specific competencies. At the same time, we were also beginning to use a game-based assessment as part of our selection process. And a part of that game-based assessment looked at emotional stability and performance under pressure. Now, game-based assessments is a relatively novel way of assessing psychological qualities. <clears throat> We use Skyrise City, designed by the UK company Arctic Shores. But the basic idea of any game-based assessments is that you can take the content of a psychological test and embed it in a game, either in a level or a task to be completed. And by doing this, you're creating more engagement and can gather a large amount of data through the player's behavior in the game. <clears throat> now, this can both be conscious behavior, such as a simulated balloon analog risk test, or it can be unconscious interaction measures, such as response time down to the millisecond in a simulated Stroop task. Now, once a candidate has completed a game-based assessment, a number of personal characteristics are also estimated. Problem of actually presenting at an airport. Now, Skyrise City gives specific scores for both emotional stability and performance under pressure. It defines emotional stability as dealing with stressful situations in a calm and even-tempered manner. And it defines performance under pressure as maintaining goal-oriented behavior while subject to negative stresses. Both of these are fairly similar to the definition in the 1995 Sasha report. Now, Arctic Shore does validity studies on the game and publishes a technical manual detailing the theoretical background of the assessments. 
So what we had here was a validated non-self-report instrument that we could then compare to our own exercise. Now, we wanted to design an exercise that would cause applicant stress, but to do so in a controlled environment. For this, we needed to understand what it was that made something stressful and how does that stress manifest. So for this exercise, we combined multiple aspects that we knew engendered stress. So you're outnumbered, you're in a novel situation, you're under constant and obvious scrutiny, you're under time pressure, but most importantly, all of this is happening while you're performing a task unsuccessfully. And that is the crux of the exercise. While there might be stress because of novelty, there's no real stress if the task at hand is easily solved. But the task also can't be something that the candidate perceives to be impossible. Ideally, it needs to be exceptionally hard while appearing relatively simple. The solution to this was found in assembly puzzles. Assembly puzzles are conceptually simple. You're, giving a com you're given the component parts and you need to assemble it, whether it's a three-dimensional form or a two-dimensional puzzle. It can be a picture, it can be a geometric pattern, sky's the limit, but there's a vast variety of possibilities. We chose the Calibron 12. Now, the Calibron 12 has an interesting bit of history. It was developed in 1933 by Theodore Edison, the youngest son of Thomas Edison. Theodore was a mathematician and an inventor and designed several unique puzzles throughout his life. This puzzle, in particular, is designed in such a way that there is only one possible complete solution, but it has numerous almost solutions, meaning that you can maybe solve all of it except one piece when you realize that you hadn't completed and need to start over again. Now, according to puzzle experts, Calibron 12 ranks as a very difficult puzzle. It has an estimated solve time of between 5 to 12 days. We gave our candidates 10 minutes and none of them ever solved it. But to give you an idea of how all of this fits together, the candidate would show up, he'd be put into a room with two assessors, a countdown clock, the 12 pieces of the Calibron puzzle in front of him, and given a standardized briefing. His goal here was to put all of the puzzle pieces inside the rectangular frame while, under, while being tracked for time. He would be told when there would be five minutes left and one minute left, if he hadn't completed before that time. Now, we didn't tell the applicant directly that we were measuring stress, as we believe that would allow for faking behaviors. But this opens up the next issue, which is how did this stress look like? There are numerous resources available describing the symptoms of stress, whether behavioral or physiological, but they were often either too narrow or specific, such as an individual might get goosebumps because of stress or get a dry mouth. It could be too obscured. Stress can cause high blood pressure. Stress can cause gastrointestinal problems. Or simply too broad, that stress causes anxiety. So we had to look for these observable behavioral signs that we would be expected to find in this particular exercise. Through a combination of literary sources, expert advice, previous experience, as well as the EU regulation 2017-373, we created a checklist of nine signs of stress that became the basis for our stress measure. They are shaking, fidgeting, stiffness, defensive behavior, avoiding behavior, inadvertent sounds, flushed skins, forceful movements, and slow movements. The two assessors in the exercise gave the candidate a score for stress tolerance, but they also marked down which stress signs were observed during the exercise. At this point, we had designed an exercise and a novel way of measuring stress tolerance, which was great. Now we just needed to figure out whether it worked. In order to figure that out, we've had placed two, <laughs> we made two hypotheses, that stress tolerance will have convergent validity with observable signs of stress, meaning that as stress tolerance increases, observable signs will decrease, and that it will have convergent validity with the game-based assessment of emotional stability and performance under pressure. Now, the data presented here constitutes a single assessment centre run, so the number of candidates is unfortunately fairly low. There are only 30 applicants that we could use, and because of data protection policy, we have no demographic or personal identifiable data available on them which was all right, because that was not the intent of that specific study. Now, first off, 
Stress tolerance, a stress, stress tolerance score was given by both assessors and then combined into a single final score. This allowed us to, to measure the inter-rater reliability between the assessors, which was 0 0.85 with a p-value of 0 0.001 and an r of 30. Now, tallying the stress signs also allowed us to see how much the assessors agreed. The assessors had a 68% agreement rate for signs of stress. This constitutes to a correlation above about 0 0.82. Both of these suggest that the assessment for stress tolerance is a reliable assessment. Now, the correlation between the total number of stress signs and stress tolerance is minus 0 0.58 p-value of 0 0.001 and an R of 60. This negative correlation means that as signs of stress increase, rated stress tolerance decreases and vice versa, which supports our hypothesis of convergent validity. The correlation between stress tolerance and the game-based measures was both significant. Emotional stability correlated with stress tolerance with 0.44, and performance under pressure correlated with 0 0.38, both with a p-value of lower than 0 0.05 with an R of 30. This also supports our hypothesis that stress tolerance and the game-based assessment of emotional stability and performance under pressure have convergent validity. So in conclusion, our study indicates that our stress tolerance exercise is both reliable and valid. This concludes my presentation. I thank you very much for your time and attention and I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference.